Good morning. How did you feel when you woke up this morning? If you were like me, you got up very quickly and looked at the news. You might have felt a little bit deflated. Obviously the big news of the day is the pending result of the US presidential election. At the time of recording, the flow of results seems to have stalled and the result, still hanging, and the result is still hanging in the balance. It appears that there hasn't been the landslide that many were expecting. To many across the world, the prospect of another four years of Donald Trump as President of the United States, the prospect of that fills many with dread. Regardless of your political persuasions, I think it's fair to say that the past four years have been bumpy. In the last four years, it's felt like the, like the relatively predictable and for the most part comfortable status quo has been turned on its head, both nationally and internationally. There's been moments in the past four years where it's been easy to feel like we're being pulled to and fro with those in power as they grapple with their opponents, trying to assert and establish themselves in order to find a firm footing from which they can build on their agenda. For many, I'm sure, there was a hope that waking up this morning, they'd find the firm result which might have reset the clock, a result which reset the tone, a result which might have brought us back to the relatively predictable and relatively comfortable status quo of four years ago. But that still hangs in the balance for now. But I just wanted to think briefly of how we, as Christians, should look at things like the US presidential election. Should we be feeling every bump on the road, or should we be standing above it all, reassuring ourselves of God's goodness and God's sovereignty? Well, I think the answer to that is doing a bit of both. We should be doing a bit of both. The good news that Christians have to share is that the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, I sometimes feel the word kingdom, it can be a bit unhelpful. It suggests a place where we are going. A destination which is coming up next, but a, a place which might be imminent, but is still a little bit of a way off. So sometimes I think that it's easier and helpful to talk about it in terms of the kingship of God. The kingship of God is at hand. The rule and reign of God is at hand. We get a view of what God's kingship looks like, first of all, when we look at Jesus, in his character, in his compassion, in his gentleness, in his justice. But you also get a view in the book of Revelation, when we see that under God's rule and reign, under God's kingship, in God's kingdom, the lion lays down with the lamb. Every tear is wiped from every eye, and there is no more death and no more pain, where all things are made new and where all the lies, all the violence and all the idols that cause such pain in this world are burnt away. We need to remember that this is the ultimate reality. This is where the world inevitably ends up. Unlike today, this result does not hang in the balance because it's a sure and certain hope for the future. But it's also a hope for now. The kingdom of God brings justice wherever it goes and when we as Christians, as the church, preach the good news in both word and action, when we live obediently and faithfully under God's kingship, then we extend the borders of God's kingdom around us. We bring something of the justice and goodness shown in that image of, from Revelation to the world around us. This is the foundation of our hope. But does this mean we should be coolly detached as Christians, raising ourselves above every bump on the road? Of course not. As Christians, we are commissioned. We have been sent to this world. We can't serve it if we don't pay attention to it. But the bumps on the road, like the ones we felt in the past few years, shouldn't cause us to despair. Rather, they should cause us to pray more earnestly for the coming of God's kingdom. They should cause us to look more actively for places where we can expand the boundaries of God's kingdom and bring his righteousness, righteousness and justice to reign. And they should cause us to listen more attentively 
for those who are crying out for the relief which God's justice, God's rule and God's reign brings. This is our job as the carriers of good news. It's our job, along with the Holy Spirit, to push forward the boundaries of God's kingdom, of God's kingship, to look expectantly for the day where every tear is wiped from every eye, where death and pain is no more, and where all things are made new. So regardless of what happens in the coming days, regardless who, who ends up sitting in the Oval Office for the next four years, we can have our eyes set on the sure and certain hope of good God's coming kingdom. And we can have our lives set on the task of expanding God's rule and reign here on earth.